I'm Emily. And I'm Hannah. We are best friends and dietitians. We have a goal of challenging nutrition misinformation and fitness trends with an evidence-based approach. Each episode, we will dish up our thoughts about the latest facts on a popular health-related topic. We're the Upbeat Dietitians. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Upbeat Dietitians podcast. Hello, everyone. Today, we have a very fun episode for you. Kind of going back, haven't done a solo podcast episode in a long time, or I guess duo podcast episode. Hopefully, you've missed us talking a little bit. But today, we're going to be talking about the importance of sleep, specifically how your sleep affects your physical or athletic performance your academic performance, if you're a student, or even kind of, if you're just, which I would say general work performance, true mental health. And then of course, we always have to have nutrition involved or dietary intake specifically. So you've probably heard at some point, like get seven to nine hours of sleep. This today's episode, we're really going to be going into the science behind correlations with low sleep durations, like short sleep durations, and then also sleeping patterns and also like quality of sleep and why that's important because sleep is very important for you. Yeah. Very important. And we know you guys are probably here. If you're a regular listener to hear a lot about like how it affects your nutrition intake to start us off, let's run quickly through athletic performance, whether you like to work out, you like to lift weights, run, swim, do like Pilates, yoga, whatever it is, sleep can affect your athletic performance. So shorter total sleep time has actually been correlated with higher BMIs. And we haven't done a full episode into BMI and Hannah and I already have, we're not a fan of BMI, but just thought we'd include it in there. Just a correlation. Yeah. Additionally, we've seen that it's associated with poor blood pressure re- regulation, low, lower physical activity levels, and then metabolic changes that are decreased as well, not in a positive light. And from a clinical standpoint, we've seen there's been developments of insulin resistance with shorter total sleep time, metabolic syndrome, cardiovascular disease, and obesity. So sleep can definitely affect your athletic performance. Do not, I, I'm sure you tell people this too, Hannah, but do not sacrifice, or I always tell people don't sacrifice your sleep for a workout. Yes. I always say that. Like if it's choosing between like only getting five hours of sleep or going to the gym or I'm wording that wrong, but like always choose the sleep. If it's going to mean that you would sacrifice sleep to get a workout. Yeah. So yeah, I would say if you're not getting any more than seven hours of sleep to go to that workout the next day just get the sleep instead. Yeah. It's your body is going to just view that workout as added stress and it's not even going to be that beneficial in the long run. So focus on sleep first for sure. Yep. All right. Let's talk about academic performance next. And like Emily said, this can also be applicable to those who are just like working as well. So not so much always just students. Of course it matters as well to get plenty of sleep to perform your job adequately. Um, But in terms of schooling, there is a correlation between sleep habits and academic performance. One study found that individuals who went to bed on average, like two to three hours earlier, actually had higher GPAs. Like the study showed that those who got more sleep were averaging a greater than 3.75 GPA, which is darn good. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Yeah. Like that. Darn good. (laughs) Better than I ever had as a GPA, that's for sure. Especially at Purdue. I think I had a 3.75 in like a semester GPA, not even yeah. like your overall, but never above that. And probably like freshman year before I got into like the real stuff. Oh yeah. And I, I'm a sleeper. Emily knows this about me. I yes, like my yes. sleep. I do not mess around with that. And even I was still getting like low threes, but that's because Purdue is very hard. <laughs> Oh yeah. We were all struggling. Yes. <laughs> Getting Sleep above no 3.5 was like incredible. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, this study that this correlation was found is that those who went to sleep around like 10 to 11 are the ones who did a lot better um, academically than the ones who are going to bed at like one or 2 AM. 
Now I will say like, if you are going to bed at one or two in the morning and you're sleeping seven or eight hours, like that's totally fine if that's just your routine. But if you're getting up at the same time as someone who went to bed at 10 o'clock, you're probably going to be worse off than that person. Yeah. Yeah. Especially I feel like in the case of college students, you're not typically sleeping in for never like seven to nine hours because you're going to early classes unless it's a weekend. But But then like, yeah. Yeah. If your weekends are like completely different than your weekdays, that's also another problem because our bodies really do best with our sleep. Um, like the quality of sleep, if we're consistent with like what time we go to bed and when we get up. So if you're going to bed during the week at like eight or nine or 10, but then on the weekends, always going to bed at one, two, three in the morning, that's just going to be no bueno because your body does a lot better with that sleep quality. If you're consistently going to bed within like an hour of what you normally would be going to bed at. Yeah. So uh, these studies also found that the higher GPA group, the ones that had the better GPA were also tending to take more naps than those who had the lower GPA. So it sounds like this study is pro nap. Yes, we are a fan of naps here. Take a nap if you need to. There's no shame in the napping game. Yeah, I don't know. I myself, I don't do naps because I think I don't do naps very often. And so when I do nap, my body thinks I'm going to sleep and then it gets into a deep sleep and I get up in like three, four hours, which by the way, my naps are never less than three hours. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> and so then I wake up and I'm all groggy and I have a headache for like two hours. So I don't do naps because I don't do them enough for my body to be used to it. But if you're good about like a quick 30 minute nap to kind of reboost, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. I also don't really nap much unless I'm like sick. Or, yeah, that's true. Um, or if I'm just like exhausted. I used to nap a lot in college. That was because I was, I feel like I was always running on low energy. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. But that was college. That was a different that time. A different time. A lot oh. of different things going on. I feel like we are completely different people than we were like two years ago. Oh yeah. I feel like if I look in every way. Like if I talk to senior year Emily right now, she'd be like, who is this person? <laughs> And I'd also look back and like, look how sad that human being is. I pity her. No, it was a stressful time. It was. I know I I was not as, I was not a good student. Not even student. I was not a good human being like Hannah (laughs) and prioritized prioritized sleep. So I was constantly running on like five hours of sleep. Would not recommend. I don't know how you did that. Like. I, I know my grades, I don't know. It's kind of contradicting what we just said, but like, I would not have as much study time because I would make sure I was getting like at least seven hours of sleep. So I don't know how you did it. I don't know how you operated on like five. I don't either. Less. I think I was just in constant fight or flight mode. The I en- think so too. The time. Never out of it. <laughs> like, oh, Purdue. Not doing well. It did us would dirty. not recommend that. The problem with dietetics is along with all of your rigorous schooling and we double majored, you also have to like do a bajillion different like jobs and side hustles to get an internship. So I have a complaint and I don't think they can do anything about it because I've been out of the system for long enough, but I was an RA and they had 1 a.m. I'm technically not allowed to say that. They had 1 a.m. rounds and, and if some res life person finds me and like reports me, you can't do it. You- what can they do now? You haven't worked <laughs> yeah. there in like two years. Yeah. There are worse RAs than me that were, okay, this is getting, this is getting off topic. <laughs> this is getting it's okay. Off. That's okay. <laughs> but that was my least, that was probably my least favorite part of the job was because on, because Thursday counts as a weekend in college Mm. life so thursday fridays saturdays we're doing 1 a.m rounds imagine i i had like 8 30 classes that's so stupid so i was not only self-sabotaging with less than five hours of sleep i was also forced to say part of your job yeah and like some people would be smart and they'd nap between but like I could not nap and then wake up and go run around outside. (laughs) Oh, so you just stay up till one and then yeah, do rounds and then go to sleep. Mm -hmm. I was never an RA, so I can't, 
like comment too much, I guess, but like what the rounds really do, like, were they really that effective that you had to do them every weekend night? Like, come on. I understand from a safety standpoint, like maybe you find someone passed out or like someone throwing up. I understand that. But we're talking about grownups, like yes, adults who, if they can't handle themselves, that's on them. Even now, I'm like some people like get your life together. Right? Who's what the are guy? You doing? Who's the guy that's like, like if you're like fit for life? Oh, what's what's the oh. name of that that biologist who like biologist? <laughs> who I can't. Not Pavlov. Who's the guy that like survival of the fittest? Who's that guy? Oh, Darwin. Darwin. Yeah. 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 Mean, come on. Like. Oh yeah. If I'm you're a passed out on a Thursday fan. Yes. I'm- natural selection. <laughs> if you're passed out on Hilltop's lawn on a Thursday night at 20 years old, like oh, people that's are gonna go you. find where I worked. <laughs> oh, I'll cut that out. If you no, are passed okay. out at Purdue's <laughs> whichever lawn. <laughs> at two in the morning like that can't be the ra's responsibility i mean i guess it is because i signed up for that job but <laughs> i did sign up for that. you signed up for that but, but but also you should have responsible friends yeah you should there's like i don't know i yeah. i can see it go both ways i know me but too. from the perspective of disrupting like my number i have many pet peeves but one of my number one pet peeves is anything I that think, I think every episode you're like my pet peeve is <laughs> I was just like a compilation of all my pet peeves. People now know what not to say. Right? Yes, but is anything that disrupts my sleep like schedule? Yeah. Oh, big now, time. One of the biggest reasons I figured this out is anytime I pet sit. Number also reason why I'm afraid of getting a dog. I hate when dogs wake me up because I like, but they I know it's like part of taking taking care of a dog. Yeah. But I get so irrationally angry. And if I don't take it out on the dog, I'm just like sitting there fuming. Seething on the inside. <laughs> and this kind of goes into those like rounds. I was like, I like you did not want to run into me when I'm out. She's stopping around. (laughs) I was like dirt flying. Everyone better be out. Like everyone better be in bed. (laughs) I will not deal with any Uh, of you. I would not have wanted to be one of your students in your. I I feel bad for a lot of my residents. Oh, your residents. That's right. That's what they're called. Mm -hmm. I'm a very different person compared to who I was as an RA. I was very. I feel like I was much meaner. Um, that's a good thing though I think as an RA because if you're just like eh whatever then you're not really doing your job very well that's true that's true they're they're probably scared of me (laughs) well good that means that you wouldn't find them passed out at two in the morning they knew better exactly so then you've got to just do your rounds and go back to sleep exactly okay well really the (laughs) final (laughs) verdict with this is that if you sleep better you'll probably do better at school (laughs) Yeah, that's all you got to Prioritize your sleep. Yes. yes. And the next component we want to talk about is mental health. And we are huge mental health people over here on the Upbeat Dietitians podcast. So, of <laughs> course, we're going to talk about this. And sleep can be correlated to your mental health status. They have actually seen in studies that depression and stress repeatedly has been shown to have a strong correlation between sleep quantity and quality. There are some other factors that affect mental health status, like poverty, stressful life events, maltreatment, family dysfunction, stuff like that. But overall, kind of studies have shown that like increased sleep problems can cause increased risk of developing depressive episodes. So not only from a physical health standpoint, an academic performance standpoint, but now also we're throwing mental health in there better sleep quality or better sleep habits can improve all three. Yep. As you guys probably knew coming in, but we're giving you the the deep dive on why I'm like a different person. If I don't sleep, like if I get less than seven hours, you do not want to be around me. (laughs) I'm not fun to be around. That's That's why I didn't love like going out and like drinking in college very much. (laughs) 
I wasn't like, I'm not boring guys. If you're listening and you're like, wow, she's like, no, Hannah no, would I, stay out till like, you stayed out till like midnight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was pretty good. That's good for me. That's like, <laughs> I'm usually four hours into my sleep by then. So yeah, that's pretty, that's pretty late. That's the one thing I have not changed at all since college. I've always gone to bed early and gotten up early, which like is, I feel like unless you're working late or you have stuff to work on or unless you need like alone time, depending on like if you have a busy life or whatnot. Yeah. Um, it's a good quality to develop. Yeah. Highly recommend getting a routine. Yeah. If it is later in the day, that's fine. You don't have to get up at like 5 a.m. if you don't want to, but yeah. I realize with all my patients how much later I go to bed than them. And I'm like, am mm-hmm. I not normal? <laughs> <laughs> I've al- we've always been very different in that way. Yeah. We're kind of on the opposite spectrum of things in terms of you're much more a night owl than I am. Yeah. Which is funny when we visit each other. Yeah. It's like you're off. Like I'm like four. in my jammies <laughs> at 7.30. <laughs> and I'm like getting maybe out of bed at 8 30 like to go run and then it's like an hour process to get ready and then yeah up by like at least for at least three hours and I'm like ready to go yeah I'm like okay it's time for my third meal of the day now <laughs> yeah oh, that's funny yeah and is Bobby like you in that way I'm sorry I like oh, Bobby, going Bobby is exactly like you so oh, well, not not exactly in the sense he's going to bed at like eight he goes to bed at nine or nine thirty I should have known Bobby and I are the same person. Yeah. Yeah. That's he why is. you're together. <laughs> yep. You're just marrying the male version of me. <laughs> yeah. No, he, I always make fun of him because he goes to bed so much. Like I go to bed around 1130 midnight. Oh He's gosh. like, there's a solid two and a half hours where we're like, cause we're both busy while we work. So we don't talk during the day. And then there's yeah. like now a two and a half hour period where I'm awake and he's asleep and I'm like, but like that, it hasn't caused any conflicts it's just yeah. funny to me <laughs> yeah it's just like the fact that you like see the beginning of the following day before you even go to sleep like if you go to bed tonight <laughs> I at never midnight, thought about it. it's gonna be Friday when you go to sleep like that blows I will see my the mind. beginning <laughs> that is something that has confused me at times <laughs> when I'm putting things in my calendar like I like to read a lot. This is completely oh. off topic, but this whole podcast is <laughs> our sleeping habits and yeah. why we do them. Yeah. Like, let me tell you about my life. Yeah. Um, I like to read a lot and I track on Goodreads, like when I start a book and I'll often read a book in one sitting in like four to five hours. So I'll start at like 9 PM and then end at like one or two. And when I'm logging, I'm like, what day <laughs> not that is not a good habit to develop <laughs> do not prioritize reading over sleep yeah that is something that has I have done that some bad time I'm bad times when I have to work early and then I am tired yeah, yeah I was gonna say it would be totally fine if it was like a weekend and you could sleep in. oh no I I have no self-control <laughs> <laughs> I mean I get it. if you get into a good book or like a good show I can relate to mm-hmm. that I mean, it's like 10 o'clock, which is my midnight, but <laughs> yeah, oh my God, I don't know what it is. I am a, I have some self-sabotaging behaviors and I'm aware of them, <laughs> but you know, <laughs> at least you're aware of them. Yeah. 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 Anyway, anyway, the next, the next component that I'm sure you've all been waiting for is <laughs> how sleep affects nutrition. And this is kind of split into two different sections. First half is going to be like, if you're getting just short sleep duration in general, second half is going to be timing of sleep and what time you're more so going towards. So I'll start us off with the durations part. They've studies have shown that, and also we keep saying studies are shown. We have all the research articles (laughs) for this one. So if you would like to check them out, and I think they're in APA format. What did we used to do back in the I day? I don't even know. The fact that you just said that set me, I wanted to like crawl under a hole. It's like definitely crawl not MLA. Hole, crawl into a hole. Is I don't even AMA? know. I don't know. There's like, I don't know. I literally, it's if in I a don't science. use, if I don't use information in like a year's time, I'm going to forget it. 
Yeah. Like if you ask me to calculate a tube feed right now, there's no way. Oh my I gosh. Do I have not done that in so long. I kind of miss it though, but you know, you like your math. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I haven't used that information since right. probably junior or senior year. Also, so I, no I am idea. glowing. I'm going <laughs> to take this down a notch. Sorry, everyone watching video. That's all right. I've got a gross red microphone that does not fit my style. So, you know, how do I sound guys? Let me know. So I can at least <laughs> redeem that. This is my husband microphone and he really likes it. So well, we'll give it a thumbs up for that. But <laughs> Give us a really thumbs up for Hannah's microphone. It's really ugly and I hate it the way it looks. <laughs> That's okay. Um, but anyway, back to short sleep duration. Don't We're know. struggling <laughs> today. Okay. Um, they studies have shown that there is shorter sleep duration has been correlated with decreased energy expenditure, increased consumption of fat or fatty or fast foods, increased snacking, greater alcohol consumption. And this short sleep duration will actually affect some of our hormones like leptin, ghrelin, and cortisol, which all affect that sensation of hunger. And it actually enhances our feelings of hunger. So when you're more tired, you actually might be hungry more when you actually, your body might need to be hungry or sending those natural hunger cues. It's just the hormones a bit more are a bit more malfunction because you aren't giving yourself plenty of rest. And last thing to note is shorter sleep duration actually enhances our hedonic stimulus. And this is how essentially the brain processes those underlying drive to consume food relating back to those hunger sensations. Yes. Yay. Very cool. So don't get short sleep. All right. So the other part of this is why you should maybe go to bed a little bit earlier, because these are the reasons why going to bed late can be a negative thing. Um, these studies that we keep referring to, they have found that people who are later sleepers, um, on average consumed about 248 extra calories in a day than quote unquote, normal sleepers. Cause like what Emily just said, like if, well, I guess that's kind of more like lack of sleep, but I guess the late sleeping too, like if, you are having more hours in your evening, you're more likely to eat more calories because mm-hmm. most of these evenings are going to be at home and that's where all the food is. So it kind of does make sense. Yeah. They also found that the majority of calories were consumed after 8 PM, which again, makes total sense because you're probably at home unless you have like a third shift job. Um, and if you don't really have a lot of other activities you're doing, what else is there to do besides eat unless you go to sleep like me at 8 PM. <laughs> <laughs> um, they also found that an average of 553 additional calories were consumed between 10 PM and 4 AM. So that's like your, you super late night people. And then as we've kind of alluded to those later bedtimes and later wake up times are associated with poor diet quality and higher risk of obesity. As you can tell from everything we talked about, <laughs> lack of sleep and late sleep night, late sleep habits has a negative effect on not only your nutrition, mental health, academic performance, and that athletic performance. So you get enough sleep and we're going to tell you, we're going to tell you how you can get more (laughs) better sleep quality and quantity with these easy tips. Yeah. So tip number one, don't have kids. (laughs) That's like the only reason that I think I get the sleep that I do. <laughs> I thought you were saying that's the only reason I don't want kids. Oh, I mean, I that's like, one of the big reasons. <laughs> oh yeah. That's why I like, I'm already hesitant to get a dog. I know I'm going to get a dog. Cause like I need emotional support. Cause dogs. Yeah. <laughs> like, like Bobby's not good enough. I need a dog. Too. <laughs> <laughs> um, but then I'm like, kids, they just wake you up so much throughout the night. Yeah sounds terrible apparently side note myself as a baby my mom said I would sleep all throughout the day so I was super easy to take care of but my dad said I was the worst because then he would be on the night shift and I would be up all the time so like imagine that I mean I and this is talking about myself so I can smack talk myself like imagine like I get home from work or I think I don't know if my mom probably was on maternity leave like I get home from work and this kid of mine is <laughs> like slept through the entire day 
and now she's <laughs> ready to go at night. Maybe that's why I'm way I, I was going to say that's like how you are now. <laughs> yeah. Maybe I'm an yeah. owl. <laughs> I'm actually a that. nocturnal creature. Yeah, like a raccoon. I think owls are That's probably though. more probably That's probably owl. more accurate to <laughs> a raccoon. I resemble I get really bad eye bags and I like eating a lot. So is that your spirit animal? <laughs> <gasps> I am this Justin. I am a raccoon. A raccoon. raccoon. They're kind of cute. <laughs> they're rowdy, but they're cute. I really like them. I do too. They're just because scary. of how like, oh, I'm afraid of them. <laughs> if I see someone like one of those by a dumpster, I'm staying clear. Like, oh. It's gonna fight me. Have you seen oh, them yeah. go up on their like hind legs? Oh like- yeah, and their eyes. Fun story <laughs> because this podcast is a shit show at this point. We're just gonna go with it. Um, when my cousin got married, we went to an island in Georgia, and so we like camped outside. And so we were camping outside. It was nighttime. The next day, we got up for the wedding, and obviously we we're camping, so everything was outside, like including the wedding dress and everything. You can probably guess where this is going. The raccoons got into like the little bin the wedding dress was in and like they didn't ruin it. She still looked really beautiful on her wedding day, but we had to do some some fixing up because they got into it. I don't remember exactly, but I think they like maybe put some holes in it or scratched it up or something. Yeah. What was their motivation? What did they smell? Like there was no food in there, I assume. Not in there, but close by because we had like everything. Uh, it was camping. So, so like everything's right. in one little area. Yeah. And like you could hear them like do their little weird creepy laugh they do. <laughs> like <laughs> it was it was really terrifying. I like don't love camping for a lot of reasons, but that like really turned me off from it. Oh yeah. So yeah, that's your spirit animal, Emily. You're a wedding dress chomper. <laughs> yes, I am accepting that. <laughs> I could but- see you going hard on a wedding dress. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> let's go over some tips on how to improve your sleep quality and quantity. Yes. So tip number one is limiting your alcohol usage, your caffeine intake, and use of electronic media before bedtime to just increase that overall sleep quality and quantity. How do you feel like you do with that one? I feel like I struggle. Yeah. I'm literally like, I lately I've been very stressed, as you know. Um, and I need to do something that doesn't require any brain power. So I just scroll through TikTok. Yeah. And it's so bad. I know it's so bad for me. I know. But I surprisingly don't have issues falling asleep. I think it's because I'm so exhausted. That's how Ross is. Like he literally has to watch like a YouTube video or TikToks on his phone to fall asleep. That's so interesting. I know. I mean, I mean, yeah, it's, it's fine. It's not like impacting his sleep. I don't think it might be. I don't know. I feel like it could but, be yeah like his quality probably he oh, gets yeah. enough but i bet the quality is probably impacted by that oh yeah that's been a goal of mine is to like 30 minutes before bed like don't even like touch it right that's when i kind of turned to reading but then we saw how that turned out so <laughs> <laughs> so instead of like 20 minutes on tiktok it's five hours of reading an entire novel <laughs> I actually I we're just I am in an oversharing mood so whoever listens to this episode you're like is Emily okay no <laughs> the answer is no um I was talking to my therapist about this for like de-stress activities and she's yeah. like because I was talking about like screen time how that's something I want to get rid of she's like oh you mentioned you like read I'm like see I am also not good at that because then I read for like five hours and it's 1 or 2 a.m. And she was like, well, why don't you read something that you don't like you won't feel the need to continue? I'm like, so I like some like, for example, I read like I'm working on Marie Kondo's book still. I've been working on that for months. I cannot get through it. I no disrespect to Marie Kondo. <laughs> I just really like my fictional books. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um something. I thought was a good idea have not implemented <laughs> mm. I just like if you don't like reading it that's a good tip it's a good tip I don't want to hear on your therapist but... right right no 
I thought it was a good idea because then I'm like, I don't feel the need to continue. Like yeah. I could read a chapter or two and still be stressed. But the thing is, then my thought process, I was like, when do I have time to read my fun books? Exactly. Like that's when you read, like that's when you read, you want to read stuff you actually really like. Yeah. So I think yeah. the solution is like, I need to set a timer or something and I know cut my, I need to practice self-control. That is my, I think that's what solution. it is. Some discipline. But it's way easier to just say it's yeah. You're just gonna like break I get rules. to a good part and then I'm like, I'll f- yeah. I'll end at the next chapter. And then it's like five chapters later. And I'm like, may as well finish the book at this point. <laughs> right. I feel like that's what I think any reader listening could absolutely feel you on that one. I don't think you're alone in that struggle. Yeah. I'm more of an audiobook kind of person. I don't know what mm-hmm. it is. It's also very self-destructive, but I feel like I'm like wasting time when I read, even though I know that's not true. It's a very great self-care activity. You can learn a lot, but I'm like someone you who like hates sit just, like, down sleep. though and listen to audiobooks. No, I like even like watching TV. I feel so guilty because I'm self-destructive. <sighs> so I almost listen to podcasts or audiobooks like while I'm doing laundry or driving uh, or like doing something productive because that's my personality. It's not good. Don't take it advice. Us reflecting us. on our Yes. Self-destructive behaviors. Yes. Yeah. We know we know that what we're doing is wrong, <laughs> but we're gonna keep doing it anyway. <laughs> not as we say, not as we do, as you've learned. Yeah, this, this is not nutrition related. This is life related. Yeah. I guess if this podcast does well, we'll know what content you guys really want. Just yeah. Us talking about our self-destructive. Do you, want to, do you want to hear more? Let us know if you want to hear more. Yeah. <laughs> We clearly have no problem talking about any of these things. sharing. <laughs> um, yeah. And okay. talking about the next tip though, that yep. we've, you've probably figured out based off what we've talked about is keeping your phone away from your bed. This is huge. Like I've tried this in the past and it has been revolutionary to me. And then I just fall back into the habit of having it next to my bed. Yeah. Yeah. I know I've tried to set a rule of like, not even like bringing it like in the bedroom, just like leaving it like in the kitchen or something. That's so smart, but ugh, it's an excuse, but I use it for my alarm and I do have another alarm as well that I can use, but I just like having the two just in case, <laughs> cause I'm a very how, anxious person. That's how Bobby is. I have two alarms always. Yeah. So does Ross. So we have four alarms go off every morning. <laughs> God. <laughs> it's pretty bad different time so it's like one hour his uh, goes off five minutes later another one then an hour later mine then mine again yeah, yeah I have that same thing but I actually have an alarm clock and I really like it but I I've shifted over time to this very gentle music that wakes me up my alarm clock is like that blaring noise. the first mar- time I tra- mar- yes. <laughs> The first time I tried reusing it, I like sat up in a heart attack. I literally thought I was under attack. <laughs> I'm just picturing that. <laughs> so I have not used it since. And of course, going back to, I'm just sharing my therapist free tips. She recommended <laughs> getting a alarm clock that doesn't have as scary of a noise. And I was like, that would make sense. Have not done it. But I know she would be right. I know she'd be very oh, yeah. right in this. Um, it's just something maybe I don't know even know how you find out the tone of alarm clocks like can you try those out at stores like I need to know I bet like if you got on Amazon and typed in like soft music alarm clock you'd find stuff that's like advertised for that oh I'm sure oh yeah maybe I'll go do that now that sounds like a fun idea that is a fun idea we should we should link one and we if you guys should. click our link, we get a little bit of commish. So thank you in advance. Yeah, if support you buy us software. in our self-sabotaging habits. <laughs> this is a good one. This is a self-care no, this is habit. A good, this, is, this, is a good, this is this is <laughs> one of our good ones. Don't support our self-sabotage. Yeah. Just the good habits. Yeah. It says don't complete That's homework awesome. in bed. So this connects also to don't complete your work work, your real world job, adult job, whatever it is you do in bed because then that kind of crosses those boundaries of your bed is for sleepy time whereas bed is <laughs> where it's to your work. You sleepy time 
<laughs> this is how my brain is functioning at this point in the week. Not doing well. It's we typically Friday record today. on yeah, this is my Friday brain. Um but we'll get back to our Monday recordings and we'll be in tip top <laughs> shape next time. Yeah. But create that boundary between this is like what your body associates with sleep because it also could lead to you falling asleep doing your homework or work in bed and then that just messes up everything because your yeah. body's very confused yeah your bed's for sleeping some patients will tell me they like eat in bed as well like keep it all separate like your bed is for sleeping do your homework yeah. at your desk eat at your yes. table yes Next little tip on how to improve your sleep quality and quantity is to prioritize your school slash your work so that your sleep can be obtained obtained at reasonable hours. So this is a pretty straightforward one, something we've already kind of really touched on, but like if it helps you to like, I guess, like Emily and I use a planner. Emily and I kind of swear by using our planners, having everything scheduled out for the day. That's very important because if you just kind of wing it, it can be, there can be a lot of overlap between your school and your work and your sleep. So really stick to your schedule. And that also goes for like, when it's time for bed, you go to bed. You don't just keep doing more work or more school. Yeah. Setting boundaries is important. Yeah. Yeah. Um, next thing to note is drinking water instead of reaching for caffeinated beverages or comfort foods, especially as I feel like Everyone has experienced this at some point where you get really tired and you want uh, another burst of like energy with caffeine or you want some type of comfort food because you're tired. Reach for water instead, just because that caffeine and those like potentially higher carb heavy foods can affect your sleep quality. Yeah. Does caffeine still make you tired? No, I'm the opposite now. Have oh, I not that's... updated you? I can't remember. Um, maybe we maybe we did talk about this. What? Yeah. Is it now like I... crazy awake now or just like normal? It's like worse. What? Like it enhances my anxiety. I start mm. like shaking. I like my mind literally is like, you know, the phrase, whatever the phrase is like going at like a hundred miles per hour, or whatever, like a mile that a is minute. Lit- yes. That is literally my mind. Like, so background story. To everyone listening, <laughs> I guess you are listening. If you are still here. <laughs> if you're not listening, you could also listen to the story if you want to, I guess. Yeah. Oh, but back at the beginning of Purdue, I would drink caffeine and like 15 minutes later, I would feel like I was going to like pass out because I was tired. Literally like not off in like a lecture. It would crack After drinking coffee. And now I don't know what, I don't know why. Like, That's so funny. Even after everything we've learned dietary wise, I don't know why. I don't either. And now I'm the opposite where I cannot drink coffee after a certain amount of time or else I won't go to bed till like 1 a.m. Even if I stop at 1 p.m., I will not go to bed until 1 a.m. And now when I drink it, I literally start like physically freaking out. I get like more anxious thoughts and it's very self sab Another self-sabotaging <laughs> thing about me is I really like the flavor. I love how yes. coffee tastes. And I know the solution is to just get decaf, but I'm so anxious ordering at Starbucks that I like am scared to ask for a decaf because I feel oh like, my gosh. Cause I feel like I'm like inhibiting them. And I'm like, oh yeah. my gosh, I'm causing like, like normally the drinks are caffeinated. I'll just, cause I always do cold brews and those are like have so much caffeine in them. Yeah. I don't think they have a decaf cold brew though. I don't think they do. And I like their cold brews. I think their only decaf is like, you can do decaf. Like I used to do like, cause I used to experience that as well. And I still Mm -hmm. do. If I have too much, I'll get like super anxious. And like my, Mm -hmm. I just feel crazy. Um, If I have like a cup a day, I'm perfectly fine. But I used to get like a decaf iced Americano. So they have that. And I would sweeten it and like add like milk to it too. But I don't know if they even have like decaf iced coffee. So I was going to say, like, I am a big, like, iced coffee fan. I know. That's what and I would so- do is I would do the Americano iced because I didn't oh. think they had decaf iced coffee. And they definitely don't have decaf cold brew. You could buy it, though. We have bought it before. Yeah, that's true. Maybe, Maybe I'll just do that. Yeah. Well, their coffee tastes so much better when, than when I make it. Oh, I know. I agree. It's just nice to go get yeah. your Starbucks. It's like a fun game whenever, like, because <laughs> I feel like coffee is such a social 
experience. Right. Like we too. used to want to do it together all the time and then yeah. you fall asleep. So we couldn't do it that often. <laughs> now I'm like now I'm the opposite way where I'm like can I like how much caffeine can I take where I'm gonna become an anxious mess around this person it's like Russian roulette it is I am the solution is definitely decaf I mean yeah but but there's not as many options though in decaf no, and like no you and I, I both like, love fun coffee stuff yeah. flavors that's typically like, I'm not normally drinking. I don't drink coffee for the caffeine. I drink coffee for the flavor. Me too. Me too. And then here we are. Like if every option was also decaf, I would definitely just choose decaf. Oh, same, same. Like if everything was available on both. I would 100%. Decaf. Yeah. Starbucks, if you're listening, can you <laughs> please make your cold brews decaf? Yeah. Um, so I don't have like an anxiety attack every time. I know we're not alone on this. I follow others no. who say the same thing. Oh, no, no, no. I see. I feel very seen when yeah. I see people like posting about this or like, is it going to be like a good day or am I going to like have a freak out? I'm, like, oh, yeah. Same. Yes. Same. It's so, I like know when it happens. Like I know exactly what you're talking about. It's oh, such yeah. a weird feeling. Yeah. I feel crazy. I used to be really bad, more bad habits. And I drink <laughs> coffee days of like interviews, which was a terrible idea because I'm already yeah. stressed and then like I start thinking worst case scenarios and I'm like shaking and freaking out <laughs> hi I'm Emily <laughs> yeah I start like sweating sometimes oh yeah I'm like I am going to decombust like is this my body like failing me <laughs> so, so Ross and I make our own cold brew that's what I have like oh, almost yeah. every day but if we don't go through it fast enough, we usually do. But once in a while, like if it's like we decide to get Starbucks one day and we get it the next day as well. And so the cold brew sits in the fridge for like a long time. Oh, yeah. We just like let it brew. Those are the times that I can like, I can like taste colors. Like it's crazy. <laughs> yeah. Like I feel so insane. I like can't imagine that because I, my, I just, I brewed my own coffee like a couple of months ago. Feel very cool. I don't even know if I actually brewed it. I just put the grounds in like a coffee maker and water went through it. I, I mean, yeah, that's how you brew coffee. So I think you did it right. But I just keep mine in mason jars, but then I like let just put them in the fridge. I yeah. can't even imagine letting it soak. Like it soaks I would probably have an ounce and I'd be like freaking out. Yeah. It, the, I think the most I've had it soak is like five days in cold brew grounds and I'm like ah. <laughs> yeah it's not good but it's delicious I told Ross I want oh, an yeah. espresso machine oh, so yeah. imagine me on espresso <laughs> that would not be good so give this podcast episode a like or follow us to support Hannah's <laughs> dreams of getting an espresso machine <laughs> By doing yeah. so, we are she'll be closer to getting espresso and not you soaking her cold brew for five days. Yeah, I need this. Do it for this me. is important for if do it for Hannah. If you truly love us and you believe in what we're doing here, <laughs> please just leave a like and that will support my dreams. I just see all the TikToks of all the Nespresso's, they're all so pretty, and I just oh, want yeah. one really bad. Oh, I love when they put the grounds in the like thing and they pat it down. Yes. I want to be a barista so bad. Like actually just experience that. When I was an intern, we, I you have to do food service. And so at my hospital, it's humongous. They had like a Starbucks section. And so we like sold Starbucks coffee. I had to be a barista for like three different days. It was terrible. It was so stressful. Oh, I'm sure. Like, the drinks are so complex. Oh, you have yeah. to like remember all of them and people come so fast. Oh, it was terrible. So if I ever was a barista, I want to do it like at my own pace in my own kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, same. Not for others. <laughs> no, 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 no. That would stress me out too much. Especially oh, it's terrible. I feel like people like you being between them and coffee. Like there are people that are like, oh, I like coffee in the morning. And then there are people that are like, I can't function without my coffee. I feel like one, they need a life intervention. Like yeah. you should not have to rely on this little liquid beverage to function. Yeah. Let's do some self-reflection. Maybe get some sleep. Yeah. Maybe sleep is the issue. Yeah. 
potentially could be dyed hairy. Yeah. Let's reflect. <laughs> and then I forgot what point I was going with this. Oh, yes. <laughs> like the fact of being a barista. And I have seen so many stories about like people just mistreating baristas. Because yes. one, they, this is a controversial statement, <laughs> but the whole <laughs> The whole <laughs> phrase, the customer is always right. Never in food service. No. We have done so much time in food service that like there is probably a 5% chance that like maybe a cook messed something up or someone made something wrong, like making a drink. But most of the time, the customer either doesn't know what they're ordering, they order it incorrectly, or they forget what they ordered. Yeah. And then they take it out on those poor food service workers who are not getting paid enough to deal with them. No, no. I remember my first job was at a Taco Bell and in my interview, <laughs> I said, the customer is always right. And I got the job. No. I met my husband there, so it paid off. But <laughs> um, I think about it all the time. I'm like, oh, little 16 year old Hannah. Yeah, but like, at least I, th- I personally think that everyone should have to experience food service. So that they have a, a good appreciation for what they do. Because now I will never yeah. be mean to a food service person. Oh, no. Unless they're like mean to before, me. But Even then, true. if they're mean to me, I'm like, you're probably right. <laughs> like, <I'm> probably- <laughs> I deserve this. <laughs> it's my other like, self-destructive thing. <laughs> no matter what, I'll be like, oh, I'm sorry. It's, that's I'll always mean. take it. Yeah. But... Be nice to your baristas. That, I know I've said this before, but be nice yeah, to have. food service workers. Say, yeah. especially now, they're going through a lot. <laughs> like, we should do a fundraiser podcast episode someday and give all our money to food service workers somehow. Is there like an organization we can give to? <laughs> there should be. Like, I don't know what it would be because I want to make sure it goes to them and not like they're their corporate boss yeah who probably won't give them the money or a raise no, no. maybe we'll we could like do out. like an internship like if you're a food service worker you can come work for us and we'll pay you <laughs> <laughs> but then they're still working for us so it's not like we're actually giving them that much <laughs> i don't know at the solution, we'll figure it out we'll figure it we out wanna we want to help we want to help we, we want to help all the food service workers out there <laughs> Our hearts out there. We just don't know how to like <laughs> how to help. How to help. We literally have one bullet point left on this, and we just like can't <laughs> seem to get there. Okay, last line. <laughs> Put your health first. Get your sleep. It's obviously very important. It's so good for your nutrition. It'll help with that. With your choices there, being consistent with it, it'll help with your academic or work performance. It'll help with athletic performance. Good for mental health get your sleep yeah that's all <laughs> that's all but we have a bonus question so don't leave yes. yet yes so i'm excited for today's bonus question because i don't know your answer so the question is i don't know if this is a preference or what's the best type but we can preference. just kind of okay preference i think yeah what do you prefer regarding soda also <laughs> The side note again, the whole soda versus pop argument. Oh. I am from Chicago air, suburbs. I do not say pop. Yeah. Pop is weird. When you say pop, I think snap, crackle, pop. Yeah. The noise. Not- I, we say pop where I'm from, but I'm, I'm hate it though. I don't want to say pop. So like with patients now, like in work, like when I work, I say soda. But like, if I'm at home, I'll be like, do you want pop? No, I don't even say that. I'm transitioning. I grew up saying pop, but I don't like it. I think I said it for like maybe less than 10 times in my life and it felt wrong. I'm like, do you want some pop? Like, it's like you're going to get punched. Yeah. What's the pop? Mm. People that freak me out more are people that call soda Coke. Like all soda. I hate that. And I'm like, thing, right? I think it's an older generation thing. Oh. <laughs> it's a boomer thing. But I, I don't know. I don't know. I have no 
I thought it was like it was like South Carolina, like that kind of region. Maybe I don't know. If you're from South Carolina, (laughs) I'm speculating. I am too. I don't know. We have our second most geographic location of listeners is Australia. I wonder what they call it. Please, if you're from Australia, please tell us what you call that sugary carbonated beverage. (laughs) That's some. I feel like they call it like bubbly or something really cool like that. Oh, it's probably Do you want some bubbly? Oh, that'd be cool. Well, yeah. bubbly is now also a carbonated water brand. True. That's kind of new. I feel like Australians have probably been doing it first. It's true. They were here first. Yeah. <laughs> Before the they beat the bubbly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but anyway, back to the question. Oh, Sorry. my gosh. I, I had to really go on like that rant because I was like, I've well, I'm glad when I wrote down but... the question, I wrote down soda and didn't I, like if you said send you into a pop, spiral. I'd be like, what is <laughs> You probably would have like crossed it out like with that little function so I could see you crossed it out and then written soda next to it. <laughs> Just so you know. Yeah. <laughs> um, but Hannah, what is your preference with soda? Do you prefer canned soda, bottled soda, bottled soda, <laughs> or fountain soda? Okay. I got this question idea from a pot or from a podcast from an episode of good mythical morning. Do you watch that? It's a YouTube channel. I've watched it for like literally 10 years. It's like these two guys that just do like food reviews and like fun food stuff. Oh, I think you've talked about this. Yes. So I, they did an episode where they like did like a blind taste test of canned bottled Mm. fountain and they, yes. We should, if we ever live in the same area, this podcast will be a whole other level. Oh yeah. It's going to be like, you guys don't even know. (laughs) Please like this podcast so we can move to the same home. (laughs) Please like, please follow this podcast so Hannah can get an espresso machine and we can live close together so we can do a lot more because we are very limited. Yes. Being in different states. (laughs) Remember when we drank wine over Zoom? That was so sad, but so cute. That was cute. I like that episode. Me too. That was a good episode. Go watch that. It's go listen to that. It's do you think alcohol is? Do you think doing doing alcohol alcohol is cool? cool? I don't know what episode number that is, but I feel like it's like seven or something. Seven is keto. I have that cemented in my brain because we said eleven to it so much. Maybe I don't know. I feel like eleven. You'll figure it out. Yeah, yeah. You just scroll down in the list. It's there somewhere. It's an early one. Yeah. Okay. But I think my answer is going to be fountain. I think I like fountain sodas the best. That's my final answer. I actually have a direct answer for once. <laughs> nice. I'm going to say canned because I like opening it. <laughs> mm. And it's the experience. It's typically always bubbly, like carbonated. Or sometimes I feel like some bottled soda isn't always carbonated. Oh, like sometimes oh, oh, it gets oh. flat. Sorry. Sometimes it gets flat. Fountain soda. I think I just don't like drinking out of those like plas- plastic paper cups. Oh, I always use a straw if I do that, which I know is bad for the turtles. I apologize. Please yeah. like this podcast so I can get more metal straws. <laughs> <laughs> honestly what if we had tud straws oh would you guys buy those let us i know. would buy those i would too i feel like everyone can use some more metal straws in their life maybe. i know but like how would it really be our brand just like our colors maybe you could do, we could do like a silver one and then just do like red orange and yellow yeah oh that'd be so cute or the really cool ones that like change color in the light oh, those are cool I don't know where you get those, but we'll find it. We'll figure it out. Like this podcast, so we can <laughs> find these straws. <laughs> we sound so desperate today. <laughs> Please help us. <laughs> We've really opened our hearts and our lives. Maybe we should them. record on Fridays more often. <laughs> yeah, this will be more fun. We're very vulnerable on Fridays. Yeah. I mean, yeah. By the end of the week, I'm like ready to share my life story. <laughs> Mondays, not so much. To whoever will listen, which is you guys. You guys chose <laughs> to listen to this. Just remember that we did not force this upon you. Yeah. Um, 
but yeah yeah I, I, look- I agree I think fountain's definitely number two in my mind yeah I think bottled is third I agree with that I just love like those Coke machines where you can like pick from like the hundreds <gasps> it seems of yes. all the different stuff. I love those. Those are so cool. Yeah. I will always like, like if we go to like Qdoba, for example, they have one, I'll get like a little bit of something, drink that and then go back like 10 different times. And, like just keep getting different <laughs> sample sizes of oh like my God. 10 different beverages. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's about it. I feel like we should wrap this up. We definitely should. We should have like 20 minutes ago. (gasps) Okay, cool. Thank you for listening today. We appreciate all of your support. You don't have to like this podcast if you don't want to, of course. That was a joke. (laughs) Please know that was a joke. Do whatever whatever your heart desires and we will. You'll hear from us next week. (laughs) That was such a long pause because i always say we'll see you next week but i'm not seeing anyone i know if they watch on youtube they'll see us that's true that's which true. is like a tenth of our listeners but that's okay yeah. it's a you podcast know. we expect that yeah but if yeah. you guys didn't know if you're new here we have some new listeners we're also on youtube yeah. if you want to watch us mm-hmm. we're not together we're in separate cities but it's still fun <laughs> to watch us yeah you can watch our live reactions. Yeah. The things we say. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay. Anyway. Okay, guys. Thank you so much for listening. We will. Oh, I see your struggle now. It's hard to say. Like, we'll see you next week because they won't. Yeah. Like, I'm going to say it anyway. Say? We'll see you next week. You know. All mean. right. All right, everyone. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much for tuning in on this episode of the Upbeat Dietitians with your host, Emily Krause and Hannah Thompson. We appreciate you all so much for continuing to support us. In order to support us and sustain the success of this podcast, please subscribe and leave a rating and review. If you'd like to provide us feedback for future episodes and guest stars, follow us on Instagram at The Upbeat Dietitians. Lastly, you can show us support by providing a monthly donation using the link at the end of our bio. Once again, thank you so much for listening today and stay tuned next Wednesday for a new episode. Until then, we hope you have a wonderful rest of your week.